The last time we went ATV motocross racing on Racer TV. Defending series champion Chad Weenan was determined to get to the front. And on his number one Yamaha, he made the move on Joel Hetrick. And then John Natale to take over the lead at Steel City. From there, Weenan was unchallenged to victory. But things would change in Moto2 as a resurgent Hetrick, trying to work his way back into race winning form after a broken collarbone, came on strong out of the gate and made the moves he needed to make to get out front early. From there, the kid was untouched. And although Weenan would win the overall, it sets up a real showdown today at upstate New York in Unadilla. Once again, it's the kid against the champ. Hello everyone and welcome to Racer TV. This is a special edition the Can-Am Northeastern ATV National, which takes place at the legendary Unadilla Valley Sports Center in New Berlin, New York. This is one of the oldest motocross tracks in the entire country. It started racing here in 1969. That's long before four-wheel ATVs were even invented. As much of a history as this has for the two-wheel set, the ATV fans have come to appreciate it as well. It's a fast, wide open, and very wide track so it really works well for the ATVs to be able to race and make passes. Big crowd on hand. We've got a lot of great giveaways. Amsoil and Can-Am giving away a Commander. And the Can-Am team, at BCS Racing, located here in the Northeast. And Josh Kramer, a New England native, would love to get the win here. We'll have to go through the Yamaha team that is surging to do it. That includes Thomas Brown here, the number 84. And Chad Weenan, your points leader and defending series champion. These three have put together great runs all season long. Let's catch up with them. All right, uh, coming into today, uh, we got good practice in the morning. We got a little bit of rain, but you know, the track just started turning around, and uh, at, you know, one practice, you know, is coming around good, and you know, coming in here with the points lead, and you know, it's we got a lot of racing left, and you know, it's six motos, so I got to keep pushing, and uh, you know, when you start letting off, you know, when things happen, so we're. We're going to be pushing hard this weekend and hopefully come out uh, on top of the box and you know, extend our points lead and that's the biggest thing and uh, just making sure that we, uh, we run good clean laps and you know, get, you know, obviously it starts uh, getting that good pole position and uh, qualifier, you know, just lap times, you know, uh, we're over two minutes so I think that'll be really good so we're pumped on the weekend, we'll see what happens. Alright, we're here at Unidil, we just finished up practice. Into qualifying sixth, we actually were setting the pole and uh, had a little bit of mishap, but uh, we got the bike all back together, ready to go for the motos. Ah, man, sitting second in points right now. Chad got a good gap in me in front. He's gonna have to have a big mistake for me to catch him, but right now I'm just focused on staying consistent, hopefully stay second for the rest of the year. Uh, maybe knock off a few wins and uh, keep pushing. Uh, Creamer's uh, about 19 points behind me, so he's definitely within striking distance, and this is his uh, his hometown race, so I need to make sure I don't let him get. Uh, getting points on me this weekend and then go into the last two rounds uh, striving, pushing for those wins. We're at Unidilla here for the next race. Just got done with practice and uh, qualified fifth. We're really close, one through five. We're sitting third in points coming into this race. I think roughly about 20 behind Thomas and 11 ahead in Natale. So I really want a good weekend under my belt so I can stretch it out on Natale and hopefully catch Thomas. So um, good start's gonna be crucial here this weekend because it's a really fast paced track, but it's an awesome facility here at Unidoa. They made some changes. I know there's a lot of fans here, so hopefully we can put on a good show for everyone. On the outside, looking into those top points positions, riders like Josh Upperman on the PEP Baldwin Motorsports Honda. He wants more today, and we'll see what he can do to get it. And Joel Hetrick, who was a championship contender early in the year until an injury slowed him, came back and won a moto the last time out at Steel City in Pennsylvania. So maybe a bit of a rebound for the kid on the 88 out of Pennsylvania. And of course, you have the veteran Pennsylvania native, John Natale on the lucky number 13. Now racing a Honda with backing from Motorsport this year, you can never count out the Ironman. We'll see if an upset is in the making for one of these riders. All right, uh, just got off of uh, practice here. We qualified, I believe it was 
We was third, we qualified, the bike's feeling good, everybody, I mean, you can throw a blanket over everybody, we're all running low 202s, um, track's turning out great, we had some rain early, the rain's got going away, and the uh, track looks like it's going to end up being great. We're here at Unadilla MX, came out with first in time qualifying, I'm trying to get some podium finishes, and try to get my points back up to fourth or third place, um, hoping for some wins in the next couple rounds, and we'll see what we can do. Just got off the track here, uh, got second, uh, really happy with it, uh, bike's working really good. Um, the new changes they made here are actually really good, uh, they're fun, um, the track's not too rough yet, but uh, you know, later in the day it might get a little beat up, but uh, all in all, I feel really good and uh, looking forward to the motos. Okay, we're ready to go racing here, so how about that, the Honda boys coming out strong in practice, including the ATBriders.com top qualifying award for the 88 of Hetrick. The start will play a huge factor as you see Chad Weenan trying to stay focused down there. As everyone mentioned, in practice it was so close at times that it could change very quickly once we go racing. I'd say the whole shot is going to be the biggest factor here. And we've got our GoPro camera on the best starter in the business. That's the number 20 of Upperman. And he has picked the inside gate. Doesn't always look at motocross whole position. Let's see how it turns out. He's controlling it through there, and it did work out. SSI decals, whole shot award to Upperman. He's no stranger to that. He has one of the Yamahas there with him on the right. The clear racetrack for a GoPro camera here early at Unadilla. They're going to jump up and then hit a left-hand corner, and then comes one of the most famous obstacles in all of motocross, Gravity Cavity. They drop down and now come back out. Upperman leading the way. It's Weenan on the Yamaha in second. And Nick Moser is the Honda rider in third. I thought it was Metalli. It's a new section. They will jump down and hit that big berm there you saw on the left side of the screen. And then the old tree turn. Totally redesigned this section of the track basically for fan access. They can run through the infield now from side to side to see different areas. And they get a nice view of them jumping back down from Gravity Cavity. Upperman controlling it best right now. Look at the width of this track. Plenty of room for passing. And that's what Weenan would like to do right now, get around Upperman. They have drawn away from a third place rider. Different jumping rhythms here. Your champ hit that half jump on the inside and uses it to power past Upperman. Oh, and you can hear the rocks. That is one of the downsides of this track. This has one of the rockiest soils you'll hear all year long. And these guys are just going to be healthy, as the GoPro demonstrated. I think that's why Weenan was so aggressive to make that pass early. Some tracks you'll set a guy up, maybe put a little pressure on here. It's all about getting to the front early. Chad Weenan, up front, stay with us. Find your flow with Maxxis Tires. ATV Motocross is brought to you by Mountain Dew, by Amsoil, by Rocky Mountain ATV MC, by Can-Am, and by Maxxis. We're back here at Racer TV, Jason Wygant doing the call. Chad winning leading this race over Josh Upperman, got the radar out for some of the riders we thought would be contenders in this one way back. The number nine, the Can-Am rider of Josh Creamer, who we know will be very fast on this track. Upperman doing a good job of keeping Weenan in sight. Here's that new section we talked about. See this jump here? That's brand new. They used to just hang a left. Now they jump all the way to the bottom of the hill before this left-hander, and then they come back up. So a little bit more action for the spectators to see, and a little bit faster. Most of these ATV riders like it that way. It's just more wide open, plenty of room for passing. And this, one of the fastest sections of all, this is where Weenan was able to take the lead. In his back section of the course. You can see that's Natale up to third now. On the 13, he has dispatched Moser and is going after Upperman for second. 
Weenan out of Illinois. Look at that, throwing it sideways and gets perfect backside of that double. A little style into it. And I believe that's Hedrick, who has now come up to fourth to challenge that Upperman and Natalie battle. At, look at that, that's surprising. First of all, some clouds overhead, that's not a surprise, but I was surprised that our leader, Weenan, actually was taking a look over his shoulder to see what was going on behind him. Usually when he's out front, he doesn't look back. He has confidence in his speed. He doesn't need to think about anyone else, but here, these three are keeping him pretty close, although the champ looks to have maybe just put the hammer down. Whoa, look at Hedrick down on the inside. Trying to make the move on Natalie. Now they're gonna jump into this pit, come back out, no change in the order. But Natalie now knows Hedrick is there, and the big benefactor may be Upperman. Now we've got Brown and Creamer battling it out next. But the big benefactor could be Upperman, as Natalie and Hedrick are hooked up in a battle for third. He's got a chance to run and hide, although they close right back in on him. It's the sky shot, one of the biggest jumps probably the biggest on this track and one of the biggest in this series. A little single here and then a big uphill. We used to call this the elevator shaft. Back past the mechanics, here we go. Weenan now starting to pull away and it looks like Natalie has finally busted the door down and gotten around Upperman. And it's uh, Brown and Kramer. They're on the move, they have closed in on uh, the Hetrick and Upperman battle for third and fourth. So it's Weenan leading, Natalie second. Here is Upperman and Hetrick third and fourth. And fifth and sixth, not too far back. And I think Kramer got a wheel on the inside. Let's see if he was able to make the pass on Thomas. Nope, Brown able to hold him off. But Kramer is definitely finding some alternate lines out here to try to make passes with and get Thomas Brown. Here is your leader, Weenan. A rough track like this, it's hard to stop him. He stands almost six foot four, and he has always been known for his abilities in rough terrain. He just has so much leverage on that ATV. And now he's put together all the pieces of the puzzle to be a champion. Some change-ups. It looks like Upperman has been dropped back into sixth. That'll move Hedrick to second. And a little high side of the fans. Weenan is feeling it, although Natalie keeping him honest down the stretch, as is Hedrick. But we are on the last lap, and it looks like the champ is headed to another mode of victory. Another step closer to a championship. It's over. Chad Weenan wins it. Nice charge by Natalie and Hedrick down the stretch to keep it close. And Kramer just edges Brown for fourth. Upperman collects the whole shot money, but you know he wants better in the results. We'll be right back after this. When it's time to get ready to ride and you need gear, it's time to go to RockyMountainATV.com. With the largest selection of ATV parts, apparel, and accessories, we have what you need at deep discounts. We have a huge state-of-the-art facility that ensures your order ships out quickly with accuracy that's second to none. Most items ship free and arrive at your door in three days or less. Visit our industry-leading website, RockyMountainATV.com today for the best prices, quickest shipping, online support, and largest in-stock selection around. RockyMountainATV.com. Get ready. Now when the sun come up, I'll be there to say what up in the morning. Perfectly at peace, so I move along a bit higher. I'll be up a bit away, up a bit away, cause they gon' judge me anyway. So whatever, I'll be up a bit away, up a bit away. Crack open a can of new Kickstart by Mountain Dew. The perfect mix of dew, real fruit juice, and just the right amount of kick. Kickstart your day. ATV Motocross is brought to you by Mountain Dew, by Amsoil, by Rocky Mountain ATV MC, by Can-Am, and by Maxis. Time for the Mountain Dew moment. Take it away, D-Man Shack. I'm Dean Manchak, and welcome to the Mountain Dew Moment. Today we're going to be talking about hole shots and their importance and how you finish in a race. As you can see, we're out here in Unadilla, New York. We got some wet dirt out here. We hadn't had the, uh, the sun like we usually uh, have on a race day and where the dirt dries out and they get the ruts dug out. This weekend we got just enough rain so the dirt's nice and moist. Come on over, we're going to show you guys what we do to prep to get these bikes out front. 
All right, you can see here on the inside, we've got a steel plate gate that these guys go across. This is how the structure works with a little gate that falls. So whenever the, uh, the starter guy says go, they hit the gate and the gate falls, you go across it. One of the most important things you want to do is make sure that the pad the boys are leaving on is nice and smooth and doesn't have any change of terrain. This is important in how the bikes transfer. The bikes transfer, you get good traction, you can keep the nose of the bike down, you launch, and you get a whole shot. And guys, let's face it. If you're not out front when you come out of this gate, chances are you're going to finish in the back of the pack. I'm D-Man Shack with the Mountain Dew Moment, and we'll see you next time. All right, D, let's get set to go racing in moto number two. Chad Weenan already has the first moto win in the books, so a lot of riders going to have to hustle to hold him back and potentially upset him for the overall. Does he look worried? Not a bit. Joel Hetrick was strong in the second moto at our previous event. We'll see if he can bounce back here. Time for moto number two. Now see uh, Upperman here on the number 20 has to line up a little bit further outside than he did in the first moto. He didn't get the good result in moto one. They're bumping and banging and he's gonna get squeezed wide and in fact it's Kramer on the BCS Can-Am who has the SSI decals whole shot award. So that's a huge change from the first moto. You see Upperman is buried and just eating rocks. While Kramer, who had a terrible start in Moto1, is now up front. And it's Hetrick, not too strong off the line either, who's right in front of Upperman. Oh, hard landing for Kramer, who's airing it out, and he's got the champ winning right behind him. So, type of battle we'd like to see. A couple of former champions in the series, Kramer and Weenan, up front. And that has been the story. Inconsistent starts for Kramer this year. There have been a few motos here and there where he's gotten the jump on everyone and has won the races. Definitely has the speed to do it. I think it's Natalie who has slotted in to third there on his uh, motorsport machine. So this is a good battle of riders who have been there and done that in the ATP Motocross Championship before. It's like Thomas Brown in fourth. And Weenan closing in on Kramer. He wants to make a race of it. And that's the good thing about Chad. Got that big points lead. And an overall potentially coming his way, but he's not going to just let Kramer have it easy. We're set for a good one here at Unadilla. The Can-Am Renegade 1000 XXC with the most powerful engine in the industry. The Outlander 1000 XT with a redesigned chassis for unequal trail riding. The Commander 1000 Limited, the most equipped, Luxurious side-by-side -side in the industry. The facts say it's the most advanced lineup out there. But the ride says it all. Eddie Engine. Any season. At home. at the track or on the train. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. ATV Motocross is brought to you by Mountain Dew, by Amsoil, by Rocky Mountain ATV MC, by Can-Am, and by Maxis. Right now. Yeah, definitely. He's one of the ones that said he's not Hammer down to for Josh Kramer. Hot pursuit is Chad Weenan and John Natale. Thomas Brown right there, and I believe that's Hetrick, who is closed up to the top five. You see the field starting to string out here at the Unadilla Valley Sports Center. That's the way you like it if you're the number nine. Get some gap, and he's starting to get it. Leaping into that new section of the track. Takes a look over and has to like what he sees. Weenan losing just a little bit of ground here and there. Been this type of season for Kramer. It has been up and down. There have been moments where we thought, well, maybe he's going to get on a win streak, maybe go after the points lead. And there's other races where he gets the bad start, is kind of mired at mid-pack, and is not really a factor for the win. The first moto told the story like that. Didn't get a good jump and had to work his way forward. And that's why uh, in the battle for the overall win, it would still belong to Weenan. Weenan back on the charge. He's got to be because look, 
you've got Natale, Brown, and Hedrick now all right behind him. So if there was any attempt to settle in, take second in this moto and the overall for the day, not going to be possible for Chad. He's got to get back on the pace. It looks like he has. Had a little gap to what he had over Natale Brown and Hetrick. Leaping out of gravity cavity. I thought that was a mistake on lap one where Kramer was hitting the edge of it, but he's actually landing that way on purpose. Whoa, down to the inside, Thomas Brown on Natale. Gave it a look, tried to do it under braking. We saw similar pass attempts like that by Hetrick in the first moto. That's one of the areas where you can make it happen, but you need to be really aggressive and probably a little closer to do it. Now Natale up to the rear tires of Weenan. So it's the battle we're gonna watch. Second place. A little bit different jumping rhythm for the Ironman, bringing him right up on Weenan, and this is going to allow Kramer to get away. So Kramer has the moto win, I'd say, in his back pocket unless he makes a huge mistake. He is not known for that. It's really going to be a battle for the overall. Can a few riders shuffle Weenan back? That could change everything. Natale was second in the first moto. He would need to have one rider help him get around, and it looks like every time he makes a charge at Weenan, Weenan is able to get back away. Now all alone in four, the Texas native Brown. What has happened to Hedrick? He has lost some ground, and there we see it. Equipment problems for Hedrick. Kramer still landing on the left side of that uh, landing zone on Gravity Cavity, so man, more bad luck uh, for Hedrick, who has certainly had his share this year. And that has been the difference. Wayne has been by far the most consistent rider. He had his problems with consistency back in the day too. Several times appeared to have the championship in his grasp. Things did not work out for him, but he grabbed his first one last year, did Weenan, and he has been aces since. I think we found Upperman here. He is having problems. So it's all fallen into the lap of Josh Kramer. First he gets the good start. Then he is able to withstand the pressure being applied by Weenan, and now everyone else is having their problems. Josh Kramer got a lot of local friends and family, I'm sure, on hand here. They're pumped to see this. He salutes them. Weenan does the same because he has the overall win coming his way. Or are they just pulling tear-offs? I'm going to say that they're showmen through and through. So no longer is Natale able to challenge Weenan. He has gotten away on the final few laps. There is Brown all alone in fourth. And the checkers are out. Josh Kramer wins the moto. It's not going to be enough for the overall, though. Here it is, Chad Weenan with one, two scores. He has not been unbeatable this year, but he has been the master of doing what he has to do week in and week out to keep extending that points lead. Kramer's fourth and moto one hurt, and Natale will round out the podium with those 3-3 three, three scores. And they're greeted by a big crowd of New York fans. Let's go talk to our top riders. All right, uh, out here, you know, Dilla, you know, the rains came early on for practice, but the day really shaped out to be really good. Um, had a good qualifying position. It wasn't uh, wasn't the pole, but, you know, we had a good gate. Um, came out in second, you know, passed Upperman right away, and, you know, just kind of, I knew what I had to do, and rode a great race, and, you know, Upperman started pushing on me a little bit. And, you know, it was, hard to, it was hard to separate out here. Uh, everybody's running really close and made for good racing. And, uh, you know, second moto, we just came out strong, came out second. And, uh, Creamer grabbed the whole shot and, you know, he, he rode on another level. And, you know, hats off to him and, you know, John and the rest of the competitors. And, you know, my winning board sports on side decal, Walsh Race Path, Yamaha, Maxxis Tires, you know, Fox Shocks, FMF. You know, his machine was working awesome out there and got us our... Uh, my seventh win of the season, and you know I'm pumped, and you know, I just I can't ask for more. And you know I'm, it's a really good weekend, and I can't get enough. And you know it's, we're heading to Red Bud, favorite track, so we're gonna put it on there, and you know hopefully good things happen. Chad uh, had a great weekend here at Unadilla. First moto, we had a pretty good battle with Thomas Brown. Ended up fourth. I got by him right there, last lap, um, right before the last corner. So I was pumped about that. 
kind of regrouped and um, just made a few changes to the bike. Came out second moto, pulled a whole shot, had a great run and never looked back. Um, took it from start to finish and ended up with second overall. I couldn't be happier right now and um, just got to thank my team, k and BCS, everyone behind us, ITP, FMF, um, Hyper Wheels, everybody. My mechanic, Jay and Jimbo, do a great job. Thanks for everybody. All right, uh, after the races here at Unadilla, had a uh, pretty great weekend, really. Uh, ended up uh, third overall, come off the first moto, come out fourth, and moved up to second. Uh, second moto, come out third, and that's where we stayed. We had a great race. Everybody raced safe, and uh, the track was great this weekend. Couldn't ask for anything more. Let's give the Amsoil race recap, and we will give you more, John. First moto, whole shot goes to Josh Upperman. Midway through lap one, a nice move by Chad Weenan to take the lead in one of the fastest sections of the course, and a big battle broke out between Upperman, Natale, Kramer, Brown, Hetrick, and more. It ended up being Natale and Hetrick two and three behind Weenan. Moto number two, a whole shot by Kramer. He was off to the races and gone, but that fourth and Moto one cost him dearly. Weenan did what he needed to do to finish second, win the overall, and continue to extend his points lead. Great riding by him. Great riding by Creamer, And the New England fans certainly had something to be happy about with the number nine's Moto win, but it's all about Chad Wayne and closing in on a title. Keep watching all year long on Racer TV. I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching.